How do you think your students look at you? Now there's probably lots of different answers. Your five-year-old students look at you very differently than your 15-year-old students do, I suspect. But regardless of age, I would imagine that the way they look at you is probably not fully rooted in reality. After all, most every teacher has that experience of being in the grocery store and one of your students sees you and they can't believe you buy groceries. That is way too much like normal life. A teacher can't possibly have a normal life. So that's the common denominator, regardless of whatever they think, whether they think you're a superhero or you've lost your mind, they don't think you're normal. And so what I want to focus on today is that you shouldn't be normal. What we have today is a standard given to you as sharers in the work of God that says you should not be normal. In fact, what we have today is an extremely high standard. One, that we should approach with some fear and trepidation, but not so much that we then shy away from the expectation of God. Because God, who calls us into his service, he knows better than we do how weak we are. And he calls us still. And the high standard that we have today for our readings is the standard of Moses. He was so close to God that it was reflected in his face. People saw Moses and they knew he was close to God. It was obvious to them because it radiated from his face. That's the high standard presented to us. It's the high standard that comes from someone chosen by God for a particular role and expected to draw near to the very presence of God. Now we look at Moses as one of those figures that is far beyond us. But it is also true that our image of Moses probably isn't that accurate. Just like your students seeing you in the grocery store isn't that accurate. We tend to elevate someone like Moses. But here's a common phrase that we hear from Moses throughout the scriptures. A common phrase that I suspect puts you in much closer company with Moses than you realize. There are a number of times where no Moses complains to God and says, Lord, why do you burden me with these people? I suspect some people here have said that before. Lord, why do you burden me with these people? And then at other times, Moses is the one that stands up and makes excuses for them. Lord, Lord, go easy on them. And so Moses is put in a position of a particular relationship between God and his people. That's the relationship you have. Your children are precious to God, and he puts you in contact with them. Now, Moses didn't always radiate the presence of God. When he was saying, Lord, why do you burden me with these people? That's not the time that his face was radiating the presence of God. Instead, it tells us in this first reading today that Moses radiated the face of God after conversing with God. After conversing with God. Another word that we can use for that is prayer. Prayer is conversing with God. And Moses radiated the presence of God because he conversed so closely. And again, we might think, well, Moses was close to God. How can we be so close to God? Moses, however, did not have the Eucharist. Moses did not have the living God in his body as food, as nourishment. We are closer to the living God than Moses. 
And so our lives should radiate the presence of God to our students. Now, another high standard given to us in our readings today is Jesus holding up for us the kingdom of heaven, saying to us that the kingdom of heaven is of such great value that we ought to be like the person who goes and sells everything for it. And so what does that mean for us? Does it mean that we should get rid of all the stuff we have and be destitute? No. But sometimes, because it doesn't mean that, we just dismiss it and say, well, it's kind of exaggerated, and so I'll just keep doing what I do. And so a challenge that I have for you at the beginning of this school year is to ask yourself, what is God asking me to sell so that I can draw closer to the kingdom of God? What is God asking me to lay aside because the value of the kingdom is worth setting this thing aside? Every one of us, in the pews, in the sanctuary, at this pulpit, every one of us has something that God wishes we would lay aside so that we could more fully claim the kingdom. Now, I also want to suggest what that one thing might be. Your time that could be spent in prayer. Ask yourself, as you go through this year and you try to balance all of the demands on your time, ask yourself, how much time am I sacrificing, am I laying aside so that I can converse with God? How much am I praying, plain and simple, as I look at my day, how much is given to prayer? And there's going to be a pretty direct connection between how I pray and how my face reflects the presence of God. And so let us commit ourselves to taking seriously this high standard, the willingness to say, I don't have a normal life. I have a life that is rooted in God. And I am listening to God enough to know when I should lay aside something, when I should sell something for a greater share in the kingdom. And when I do that, then I will be more effective as a teacher. Because my role in Catholic education is not just to convey knowledge, it's to reflect the face of God. And so as we commit ourselves to giving more to God's kingdom, as we allow our converse with God, our prayer to shape our lives, we can accept the calling that we are not normal because our very lives reflect the presence of God.